What's going on developers and creators out there? My name is Ericsson and I'm back again to talk about Fire on PL project. This time we're going to be talking about software. We're going to dive into the Zinc CPU and talk about a bare metal application that runs on this project. So let me quickly go over what the project is about for those of you who are not familiar with this project. So the gist of it is you have a bare metal application running in the Zinc CPU that configures uh, the DDS frequency control a custom IP to set the DDS uh, output frequency. So DDS will put out a sine wave at a desired frequency and that data is sampled by a custom RTL module called sampler that streams that uh, signal to a filter and the filter output will be stored in a 5 volt. So once the 5 volt full, the 5 volt full interrupt can generate 5 foot full interrupt generator custom IP, another custom IP in the design will trigger an interrupt that causes the CPU to stream the data, causes the CPU to configure the DMA to transfer data from the 5 all the way to the DDR memory. In this uh, video, we're going to be talking about the software, the peer meta application running the CPU. Last time we looked at the Vivado environments, how we would design this in Vivado, but this time we're going to look at the software and the next time we're going to be looking at processing looking at that data to see if it makes any sense so if you haven't watched that video go ahead and uh, jump into my channel and watch that video on setting up this project on Vivaro on settings Vivaro so we're going to pick up from where we left last time and we have the folder set up if you request this project we were looking at FIR on PL phase 6 what you see here uh, we have the hardware already set up. So we have the Vital project. If we go to in this folder, if we go to uh, work directory, directory and design, this is the design that we're looking at open in Vivaro at the moment. So it's already done, compiled, successful, and we already generate a bitstream and export exported hardware. Hardware should be in software hardware dot X, the files here dot x as a Joselink specific file that contains the hardware configuration that will be exported to a, a virus for development so software development so the first thing that we're going to do is go to tools and ex launch virus id but before we do that i want to point out that i'll be doing this two different ways and uh, one way is we're going to use the gui which is the virus id which is well built the uh, software environment that you can you know debug and uh, do your software development and i'll do it the other way which is me which i'm a script guy so we're going to be running scripts using uh Zellinx. let me open that up using Zellinx uh software uh, open that up Zellinx software command line two so we're going to do it two ways so first way we're going to use a gui and the second way we're going to use this command line to do the same thing in a in a script using the script file using script files so let's go to tools so I launch virus from Vivaro you can just always can open virus some other way so once uh, virus is uh, open up we let me mention that the project will be created here so the Vivaro project is in this folder virus project or software development will be created in this folder it's empty right now but we're going to be populating or adding a lot of stuff in a lot of files in there in soon so let's set the work workspace and does that look right yep so we want to make sure we are in this folder so select folder and then lunch so we're going to do three things we're going to we're going to create a platform project using the XSA file that we just uh, uh, looked at, which is this file right here. Uh, software, hardware. And then after that, we're just going to, uh, after we create our platform project with the domains and all that, we're going to be modifying the board supports, uh, board support settings to uh, be able to communicate with the board that I'm using and then we're going to run an application that I will be talking about in a few so let's go ahead and start with uh, creating a platform project so here it is uh, let's give the platform a name so we're going to get name it FIR FIR 
Firearm PL. I'm just going to be fancy here with the name. I hope that it's a good name. Uh, and also, it, uh, it gives you a, an overview of what the Vitus does, what, what environment you set in here. I would recommend you go around and figure out how Vitus work, what's domain, what's a, a platform project. The goal of this video is not to explain that stuff, but just to show you how to how to set up uh, this project in Vitus. So click next, and then we're going to browse, and then we're going to go directly with to where that .dot .x .dot .xsa file is located. And that should be around in on the software. So again, I'm just going to browse to the right uh, folder location, software, hardware, and there it is. So we are in the process of creating our platform, and that should be done soon. So that's golden. So we're good with that. Click finish. Should be done soon. Come out tool. It's for today. People's got things to do. Yeah, that usually takes about, I would say, uh, 10 seconds. It depends how big the file is. But uh, so we're good. And so the next thing, like I said, is we're going to be modifying a uh, uh, board support package so we just go to uh, the first stage bootloader and modify the BSP and for this is uh, specific to my case it might be different for for you that my SD my communication with the board with my board custom evaluation board that I'm using is using UART one so this is configured even starts from Vivado all the way to here so make sure you configure that for your board so Press OK. Make sure that's golden. If you have a board, uh, make sure it's configured for your board. You probably played with your board several times. You probably know how to get the uh, get the comms between your board and PC to work. So we're gonna do the same thing for uh, the standalone files. Let's do that. So we change it to your R1, STD in, and then STD out. And then after that, after this is done, we're going to build a platform. And see if we get no errors. So we're gonna build that. As it it's, it's, as it's doing that, I'm just gonna jump to the uh, folder where everything is being created, so you can see that you know it's not an empty folder anymore. You have your uh, data files that is being created. You have your platform uh, project in this folder. So let's minimize that. Get back to the tool. The next thing that we'll do is we're going to be running. An application so that application is already uh, created uh, let me show you where you can find the application it's located uh, on the software source so for this case we only need about these three files uh, it's a uh, this is a uh, drivers for the FIFO FIFO interrupt generator and this is the main which does pretty much everything where you have your main function in this case so we're going to drag this and we're going to paste it and uh, actually before we do that i'm not skipping steps here people uh let's uh, create the new design new application first so we have the platform set up let's go to file oh, if i can get to file let's go to a uh, file oh come on can i get to what else File, I'm gonna do it slow this time. Let's go to File, New Application Project, and we're going to build an app. Let's call it, so we're gonna use the platform we just created, and then we're gonna call it FIR on PL, PL uh, app. That's a good name, good enough for me. Next, that's your domain. Make sure your domain is correct. Yeah, we're using the first CPU of the two CPUs. It's a standalone, and uh, we're golden. So we're now you're using an operating system. I click next. So here you want to choose between if you want an empty application or a hello world. I'll do a hello world, and I'll get get rid of it. I mean, you can just, I could have just gone with the empty application, but doesn't matter. So we are now have an application here. So you can see you have your hello.c here where you have your main function. Uh, we're just going to get rid of it. 
let's delete that so we delete in the hello world and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be copying our application and run it so this is where it gets a little tricky because what i'm doing right now is i'm copying files for where my revision files that are under revision control to some folder that is not under revision control so i have to be careful so i don't make changes while running this project so if i make any change here let me actually copy the uh, files there already so let me copy the files so these are three files that i'm that i'll be copying over copy paste so there it is so basically i just uh, i can show you from the from this, from this folder i just copied and pasted my project in this folder software development so everything should be here source so here it is the three files that i just copied it over so basically if i make any change here it's not going to show up under software where my uh, where the files are under revision control so you have to be very careful i haven't figured out a, an, a way to actually reference no not to not go through this process still trying to figure that out so if you have a better way you know put, put it just maybe you can uh, put it in the comments and uh i'll see if i can modify and make this thing more realistic because the thing is you might want to you know you might want to work with this you might make change and then you close it out and then later on i go i delete my bucket what i call my bucket where i do development and then all my changes will be gone so be careful so you don't run into that so now that we get that out of the way let's uh build the project so we're going to build the project build the project and uh build finished just a couple of warnings no errors and the next thing that we'll do is we'll connect the board so make sure you have your board that you want to test this on so i'm just going to connect the board here there you go our board connected and i'm using uh putty for my terminal comps so i can see my serial data output of the data up, output of the board coming in so i'm in con 4 i've done this several times so I have memorized it i hope that's right i think that's right uh, for the baud rate so you want to do open so this is where we're going to see the output of the board so output it's going to center that so we can see clearly and then uh, so the program has finished the uh, uh, building we want to run as run on hardware so we're going to run it on the hardware and we should see something popping up here and there it is so transfer done so what just happened is that the cpu did what i explained at the beginning of this video cpu configured the dds the dds configured the dds cpu configured the, configured the dds frequency control register which will control which will set the output of the dds and then the the data is streamed all the way from the DDS to the, D, to the DR memory and then the application stops. And let's go back to the uh, to the project development. And we are golden now. Now let's do it, the same thing using uh, a script based project. What's the time here? Okay, 14 minutes. So let's close everything out. Let's close that out. Yeah, close that out as well. X that out and then let's uh, go back to our folder and let's even eliminate all of this stuff. We don't need this anymore. We're going to have stuff, our project being created now using uh, Xilinx command line, which is, like I said, it's uh, scripting your project is really recommended. It's more uh, maintainable. You can easily modify a project if it's all script based. So let's go to, let's go to software this is the these are the scripts that i'll be calling to uh, build up my project i can open this one and we can see that what's happening here so this one uh creates a project again it creates your uh creates your platform project uh, uh creates your application and also uh builds up your application so that's uh that's what the create project uh script file does and then we have a uh, run app 
after we run create project we're gonna source a run app which will initialize your uh, ps7 uh, load the first stage bootloader and then download your application to the board this is what a uh, run app will do so we're gonna source uh, create project and then we'll source run app so let's do that so in xilinx command line to let's get to the right location we're gonna copy and paste uh, the path location let's copy the path location so now we reference into this folder let's uh, source create project Cl. Oh no, maybe I spelled it wrong. Did I create? Okay, I did. Source. Okay, let's uh, miss the dot. So dot tcl. So it's gonna start doing what we just talked about. So that will take about a few seconds, maybe 30 to 40 seconds. Uh, let's wait on that. And while it's doing that, make sure. He, um, it's going to be exporting these files into the project. So make sure you don't mess with this. If you want to use the script files, don't mess around with the, uh, the, the script files. Don't change it around. Keep them where they are if you want to use these uh, uh, script files. They're, they're referencing to the files where they are as of now. So this should not take any longer. It should be done soon. And after we're done with that, what we'll do is we'll like he said, uh, uh, run this file right here, which will uh, do the final steps, which it to the point you can see the output. Oh, I closed the terminal. Let's open the terminal again using Putty. I closed that so I can you know, have a clean one that I can see and debug my output. So let's do that. We open Putty so we have the comms with the board uh, open again. So it's at this time it's building your project that shouldn't take um, uh, more than 10 more seconds that should be done soon so we are ready to now run the project so let's do that let's source run app so once we do that we should see the output coming out oh here it is so we did it two different ways this time we did it with script files and uh, we're golden so both ways uh, worked successfully the project was completed and you can go ahead and play with the script files the code but i just the goal of this uh, video is to show you how to set it up so you can be on your way to be, uh, use your innovation to expand modify and do as you desire but thanks for watching it in the next video what we do is we're going to be uh copying the data that was transferred that was filtered in the fbj fabric that was copied in the ddr memory and we're going to take that data import it to matlab where we're going to be pl uh, plotting the data and we're going to uh, compute the fft see if it makes sense so stay tuned for the next video i'll see you guys soon